There goes all those lights. Oh, hi, birds. Ow. No, I didn't miss you. They're straight up. Ah, fuck. You had one of these things you didn't even tell me about it. This Jesus, way. woman. Need to go. I knew them both, Tom and Barbara. I had such a crush on him. Such a beautiful man. I was jealous. There was a part of me that was maybe a little glad when she had the accident. And then Tom started writing and, and woke the darkness up. He tried to bring her back, but you can't do that. There are no free rides like that. I'm starting to realize that. In that case, young man, perhaps you're a smarter man than Tom was. The witch looked like her, but it wasn't. Barbara was sweet. He didn't understand until it was too late. He tried to undo it, wrote himself, her, everything he'd ever written out of the world. Oh, he was so famous. And afterward, no one knew. Oh, Tom. He left only one thing behind in my name, in case it happened again. Insurance. He trusted me. Or perhaps used me a little. Tom knew how I felt. Knew I wouldn't refuse him. I built the well-lit room and put it there. It's been waiting for you. We are characters trapped in a story you have written, and none of us will survive to see the end of it if the darkness isn't stopped. She'll twist the story to her own dark ends. How do you know all this? Tom. That's the way he wrote it. He still talks to me, you know, in television, from beyond, from below. We have both been touched by the darkness, young man. He saved us both with life, but the darkness stays with you. He's a stay. This pipe will take us directly to the well-lit room. Okay, I need to call my friends, tell them where we're going. Hello? Ow! Barry, we're headed to the dam in one of the pipes. Meet us there. Okay, I'll tell Sarah. It's Sarah now? We gotta go see if they're okay. They're probably dead. You must reach the well-lit room. This is no time to be a selfish idiot. That's my best friend! Well, be a fool. I'll use the pipe. I'll meet you at the dam if you make it. Alan Wake doing his usual Jesus pose when he jumps off a cliff. Yeah, that's great and all, but you're being a... <laughs> I hate main characters that are idiots. Alright, let's check it out. Sarah was almost starting to relax. Maybe they could turn this into a win yet. Suddenly, there was a piercing sound, like a table saw gone wild. As a hundred birds made out of shadows swarmed into the rotor, the chopper bucked wildly and the board lit up, telling her what she already knew. They were going down. Barry Wheeler screamed next to her. <sighs> yeah, time to go check it out. Oh, there's the dam. Birds. Fucking birds. Birds! Got your number. Got your number. Ah. Fuck. Go ahead, come on back. Look at that risky pathway that I can take. Mmm, talk about a shortcut. 
Except I'm not going to pass up on supplies. Almost there. Just a little bit farther. Come on. Ooh. Damn it, I can't jump or sprint. It's gonna be risky. Risky business. I see you, birds. Bring it. Bring it! Ah! As I could tell, the wreck was empty. Follow the trail of flares. Maybe we'll find them. I guess we'll see. Barry! Barry! I hear him. Don't worry, I got gotcha. you. Woo! Oh, I didn't mean to shoot a flare gun at him. When to make an entrance wait, we were ready to make like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I have a different ending in mind. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. I knew you'd be all right. How's that? The flaming eye of Mordor? Uh, laugh it up, funny man. Didn't we have somewhere to go? Weaver will meet us at the dam. I'm surprised I can hear me. I'm gonna take that hunting rifle just because I know it does more damage on the uh, shotgun. And I'd rather take precise damage over spread damage. In my history of playing games, it's always served me better. Oh, I see it. Don't have to tell me twice. I'm just glad to have help again. It's a teleporter. Just keep moving. How many of them are there? Where'd that one go? Ah, this happening. If we don't bother them, they won't bother us. Coffee. Hey, Al, I Wait, got a call the feeling. elevator. I'm keeping watch. I think I hear something moving around. I hear a lot of things moving, but you know what? I'm not complaining. Bring it. We got all the help we need. All the flare guns we need. All the flashbangs we need. Heads up. Here they we got come. everything. Bring it. Oh, no. Bring it.
some more of you. Made it. Ooh, boy. We're almost there. There's an entrance into the dam at the top. What's the plan, Wake? Well, Weaver's crazy, but she's got something Zane left behind. Something to fix this. Gee, could you be a little more vague? Thomas, Zane? Seriously? Might as well be Paul Bunyan or Bigfoot. Yeah, well, he was real. Keyword was. <laughs> He's dead now. God rest his soul. Oh, jeez, I hate this. No, it's not that bad. Okay, wait. There's a button over there that opens the door. <laughs> no problem. I think something's broken. Hold the button down so we can get in. Oh, fuck me. Yeah, and then let me guess. It's gonna close. Oops. It's gonna close and then people are gonna come flying out of my butt. Hey. Fuck you. What's happening out there? You guys go ahead and find Weaver. She should be in the dam now. I'll have to make it alone through the top. Through the top of what? I have nowhere to go. Hmm. Let's say is this stuff gonna become possessed? Yeah. I figured as much. No problem. Oh! <laughs> Let's go. Down, boy. That wasn't even a clever one-liner. God damn it. Thomas Zane knew he had to remove all that had made this horror possible, including himself. That was the only way to banish the dark presence he had unleashed and now looked at him through the eyes of his dead love. But he also knew that despite his best efforts, it might someday return. So even as he wrote himself and his work out of existence, he added a loophole as insurance, an exception to the rule. Anything of his stored in a shoebox would remain. Hmm. So he kept the shoebox and it survived the loophole of the story. What on earth? What on earth? <laughs> then again, you have to remember that Alan Wake is writing the story of Thomas Zane being real and all that, so props to him. Wow. There goes all those lights. Oh, hi, birds. Ow. No, I didn't miss you. They're straight up. Ah, fuck. <laughs> what the fuck? You know, thankfully she wrote directions down, uh, not through the pipe, just in case I was going to break off from her. It's like she knew or something. Well, oh, so can YouTubing. The searchlight could even the odds. Yeah. Oh shit. I overused it. These guys aren't moving. 
That one's hiding behind a tree. Okay. A constipated wiener dog. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh boy! Hold on, I'm too fat. Oh! Oh no! Oh no! The room. Coffee. Coffee. Ah. Oh shit. We're channeling Crash Bandicoot. I'm trying to run. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's impressive. Keep track of all that. But I get the feeling she's wrong about it being well maintained, power wise. What is going on with her hand holding that lantern? It was active during the Second World War. They operated here back then. They must have built this. Yes, they did. It's my place now. Well, who said she has ownership of it? Take it. Because 6 and 33 and 118 need changing soon, and I don't want to climb up the ladder to change them because it's very late and I'm tired. And if you take it, I won't have to do that anymore. The page was autobiographical, a memory from my childhood. But I didn't write this. It was a page written by Thomas Zane. None of them were supposed to exist anymore. Alan, seven years old, would fight sleep to the bitter end. When he did sleep, he soon woke up, screaming, the nightmares fresh in his mind. One evening, his mother, sitting by his bed, offered him an old light switch. She called it the clicker, and flicking the switch would turn on a magical light that would drive the beast away. To imbue the talisman with all possible power, she added that it had been given to her by Alan's father. Alan never knew him, and anything of his took on mythical proportions in his mind. With the clicker firmly in his hand, Alan finally slept like a baby. Now, almost 30 years later, Alan thought of this. As he stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, the clicker in his hand, he took a deep breath and jumped. My mind swirled. I'd given the clicker to Alice, yet it was here. Zane had written it into existence in a story I had written. I can get to her now. I can finish this. Well, it's too bad we're stuck in there now. <laughs> Just kidding. That's pretty meta, though, to write that kind of into the story. <sighs> 
Is episode six the ending? Previously on Alan Wake, I wrote a horror story that has come true. Thomas Zane did the same in the 70s. You will go no further. If I continue like the Dark Presence wants me to, the story I'm writing won't save Alice. It's a horror story. No one will survive. You knew Zane, Thomas Zane. You're the Lady of the Light in the song. He left something behind to help me, the clicker. Alan thought of this as he stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, the clicker in his hand. He took a deep breath and jumped. I can get to her now. I can finish this. explode and the light hurt my eyes. I needed my sunglasses and painkillers to dull the pain. In one of my finer moments of self-deception, I swore to quit drinking. Uh-huh. This is a hangover if I've ever seen one. Look at that clean-shaven baby face. <sighs> the sunglasses made the Ugh. world look bearable. Now I could keep my eyes open without feeling like a vampire in the sun. Eyes to meet you. I wasn't sure I'd make it out there without some painkillers. So I slightly opened the door and then slammed it again. Good lord, what is that buzzing sound? The pills worked fast. Oh, here we go. The prospect of being awake started to seem bearable again. There was a message waiting for me on the machine. Yeah, well, what about my writing room? There's another one of those sons of bitches. Episode of Night Springs that I wrote. Oh, good lord. Welcome back to the Harry Gallant Show. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We have a great show tonight. I've been talking with the best selling author, Alan Wake, about his new book, The Sudden Stop. Yeah, good read. Go buy it. No, no, it is a good read. Look, uh, I'm gonna be honest here. Is that wise? No, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I got people who give me the lowdown on books. I'm a busy guy. But this one, I actually read from cover to cover. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan. Wow, thanks. Now, this might be a spoiler for those who haven't read the book yet. Based on the sales figures, the two people out there who haven't read the book yet. <laughs> but this last book is all about the death of the main character, the hard-boiled New York detective, Alex Casey. Now, there's been a lot of outrage about this. Why the hell did you kill Casey? What the hell were you thinking, man? Good riddance. <laughs> no, seriously, though. No. Seven years and six books is a long time. He was a gloomy guy to spend all your working hours with, and it was a good run. But it's time to explore new things. My next book will be a departure from the old for me. You selfish bastard, always thinking of yourself. Well, you've certainly given us a lot of entertainment over the years. And now that you mention it, Casey was a gloomy guy. Never had much luck with his love life with the ladies. Was that autobiographical in any way? Yeah, no kidding. Casey's lady friends tended to die on him. With Casey, it was all about his pain. No, nothing autobiographical about that. I'm a happily married man. My wife is my muse. Well, congratulations. That's great to hear. So. How's the publicity tour been treating you? Good. Great. But I gotta say, I'm glad to be back home in New York. Well, you've certainly been on the news a lot lately. Lots of parties and, um... You got into a fight with some paparazzi. Oh, man. Well, that guy was really in my face. I lost my temper. I know that wasn't cool. Well, uh, you are famous for that temper. 
Well, I did also write several books. <laughs> well, your latest novel is called The Sudden Stop, and it's in bookstores now. Go get it. That means the two of you out there who haven't bought it yet. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for you tonight. I want to thank all our guests for the evening. Alan Wake, Sam Lake. Once more, do the face for us, Sam. There we go. And our musical guests, Poets of the Fall. Thank you. At least I've been funny. I told myself I could live with that. Hey, honey. Did you watch the show? I didn't say anything stupid, if that's what you want to know. Are you going to start with me about drinking now? You know what? Go back to sleep, Alan. What? Now you can't even talk to me? Well, this morning I was angry because you said you'd be home at midnight and you showed up at 7 a.m. and passed out in mid-sentence. Now I'm over it. Are you angry? This goddamn tour. It's gotten out of hand. Oh, honey. It's almost over, right? We can get back to normal. Then you can start writing again. I'm sorry, honey. Alan, you're not thinking straight. Just take a shower and go back to bed, huh? Yeah, you're right, honey. I'm sorry. Once this is over, let's go away together. A vacation. Just you and me. Some peace and quiet. Somehow, the clicker was the key to the cabin. I had to return to Cauldron Lake to save Alice. I'm going back to the lake to finish this. I'm going to write an ending to the story in the manuscript on my own terms, to make it all right. Why can't you just write it here? The last page is still in the typewriter. I need to read it first. Everything needs to be just right. Zane tried to cut some corners, and it didn't end well. Okay, ready when you are. I'm sorry, Sarah, but I need to do this alone. Barry, take her gun. Miss Weaver, close the door when I leave. Good luck, Al. See you later. Sunny. I had flicked the switch of the clicker. Had it done this? I didn't stop to question it. I had to take advantage of the sunlight to get to the lake. On Zane's page, I had stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, about to use the clicker. That's where I was headed.